Hello, everyone. This is Serena de Cecilia. Thank you for joining this webinar. We are waiting for, yeah, here it is, my colleague Christoph. Welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, this is the third appointment of Flojo with you guys. Uh, can you see my screen? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, before starting, I would invite you to please write your questions and answers. Uh, well, questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat as um, oh, oh. What is it? What's happening? I'm having, okay, Q&A. Okay, perfect. Okay, so please make your questions in the Q&A box and Christoph will be happy um, to respond to your questions. And meanwhile, so please let me know that you see my screen and you can hear me. Okay, perfect. Okay, so today it's going to be our third appointment for uh, a webinar regarding the high dimensional data analysis in Flojo, and we're going to talk about plugins. I hope you guys have been uh, looking into plugins and what are the plugins, but before going on, I always want you to remind that you can always check our website uh, and the, the Flojo manual. The Flojo manual contains all the information you may need uh, regarding Flojo and going from downloading the, the software to performing your analysis to create um, finally some reports for your analysis. Uh, please check our webinars and our Flojo University. The Flojo University is a platform where you can find all the recorded webinars uh, and you can also um, register for live webinars like this one. This is at uh, EU time but usually we held webinars at 7 p.m. And this afternoon, there will be another webinar on Cytonorm from our colleagues uh, from US. So if you want, you can also sign up for that one. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn for all the latest news. And you can always contact me or the technical support. The technical support is available at flojo at bd.com while me and Christoph are available at these addresses here, uh, serena.di.cecilia at bt.com. I see something in the chat. Could you put, yeah, sure. It's just few slides, so, okay. Uh, this is my email address and Christoph email address, so, um, Take a screenshot if you need. Uh, I cover Southern Europe while Christoph covers Northern Europe. So what are plugins? Plugins are uh, applications that extend the functionality of, um, of the software. So the software Flojo is given to you as a smartphone when you buy it. So with no applications installed on it, but you can all, um, you can already perform your analysis without plugins. If you want to extend your analysis and you want to improve it, like in this case, where uh, we are talking about high dimensional uh, data analysis and we want to use uh, extra features such as plugins, uh, you can always download the plugins and install them. The plugins are always free and we release about one new plugin per month uh, that can be either for Flojo or Seekick. So when you open up your workspace uh, on the activity tab right here in plugins, you will find um, 
the first row that uh, that says Flojo Exchange, and then on the bottom, all the plugins that you have installed into your Flojo. Of course, if you don't have anything installed, you will find nothing except for the Flojo Exchange link. So if you click on the Flojo Exchange tab right here, you will be driven directly to our website where you can um, easily download all the plugins. And you can filter if you want to look for plugins for Flojo or SeaGeek and for the specific category of plugins. So let's just go live and see what we can do. So this is my workspace right now. I have prepared the workspace with some samples in it and just made um, an easy gating um, just to, for, for sake of time. So if I go under my activity tab and I click on plugins, I will have a full list of plugins that I have downloaded on my computer. If you see right now, the plugins are um, grayed out, which means that I cannot apply them because I haven't selected any sample um, to apply the plugin on. So if I want to download a plugin, I will need to um, go on the Flojo Exchange. So just click here. And you will be directed to our web page. Here you will find all the plugins available. You can select for Flojo or SeaGeek. So for example, I will just select the ones available for Flojo. And each plugin has a small arrow right here where you can download it. And whenever you download a plugin, like for example, right here on my download tab, I have several plugins that I have downloaded already. Uh, you will have a zip folder. So if you open up the zip folder, do this. If you open up the zip folder, for example, this is one of the plugins, this is Blossom, you will find several uh, sources in it. So you will find the jar file, which is actually the plugin and uh, what is basically the algorithm and what will work in Flojo. And then you will find the PDF. If you open up the PDF, you will see that there are all the informations needed to install the plugin and to connect um, the plugin to Flojo. Some of the plugins that we have needs an accessory, um, let's say an extra software to work, which is called R. R performs calculations, it's free and uh, is available on, uh, on the internet for everyone. And it will work in the background together with Flojo for some of the plugins. Not all of them will require R. So depending on what you want to use, you may need or not R. But I, my advice is always to have R on your computer, uh, just in case in the future you want to use something that is dependent from it. So uh, you will have it available. Um, so here you will have all the information on how to download and install, uh, install the plugin. And what you will need to do will be copy paste the script right here. That seems uh, to be Arabian sometimes. Okay, put it a little bit bigger. You will just need to copy paste this uh, script into R and R will process it automatically. So once you have installed the plugin, you will not need to do this operation again whenever you want to use the plugin. So it's just for the uh, installation of it and then it will work automatically for you. Um, the second point to keep in mind is that if you're using R and Flojo needs R, it, it, it means that Flojo needs to be connected to R. And how do I do that? I go under my preferences, which is this small heart up here, and into my diagnostics, I will have two things to check, which are the R path, so basically where Flojo asks access to R and where I connect Flojo with R 
and uh, the folder where all, the, all my plugins are, which basically are the jar files that I showed you before. So you will need to have a plugin folder where Flojo can go and check and pick the specific plugin that you want to use. For example, on Max, if I go under Finder, under my applications, I have a plugin folder, plugins folder, that contains all my plugins. So all my jar files that I downloaded from the website and I just copied and pasted into this plugin folder. Clear? Hopefully, yes. Once you have set that, you can also use one of the plugins, which is basically the starter of our plugins, which is called Plugin Wizard. If I download and install Plugin Wizard, which is this one, what it will do, it will guide me through all the steps to download R and install it, to set the R path for my computer, to select the plugins folder where I have all my plugins installed, and eventually if I want um, and there are new versions of the plugins, I can always click on what's new on Flojo Exchange. And I have basically a table where all the plugins are listed, which is the latest version and what it, which is the version that I have installed on my computer. So you can always update the plugin because sometimes there are updates of the plugins, for example, for new versions of R, we need to update the plugin to make it work with R. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's start, um, talking about the, the different categories of plugins. So we have plugins for dimensionality reductions uh, and we have plugins for automated clustering and we have plugins for quality check. We talked about plugins for quality check in the previous webinar. So if you're interested in that, such as Flow AI and Flow Clean, you can check our previous webinar from um, May 7th. Uh, that Christoph gave, and there is a super nice explanation of the uh, quality check plugins. While for dimensionality reduction, we have different options. We can use, uh, for example, Tisney, which is not a plugin in this case because it's built in the in engine of Flojo, so it's native and it's way faster than the plugin uh, version. And <clears throat> And I can access to it directly from my, uh, from my activity bar without downloading anything. Uh, before using plugins, it's always recommended, at least from my side, to um, try to clean up your samples. And clean up meaning uh, focusing on your population, on what you are interested in, for example, and removing debris and doublets and uh, dead cells, so things that can be uh, bothering during your analysis and things or events that you may not be interested in because they're just going to alter your uh, analysis and uh, are not going to be significant at all. So in my workspace, I use the same data set uh, that I used pre that we used previously in our webinars. So these are uh, this is a phosphofluor intracellular staining. And it's an easy experiment with eight colors, uh, with, with an eight colors panel. And in this case, I just cleaned up my samples right here. Um, I get it on physical parameters. I excluded doublets and um, debris, and uh, I get it on my live cells. Also, um, I get it on CD3 as Mm, I want to see, for example, differences in uh, the CD3 subpopulations, but you can also avoid that. For the sake of time of today, I'm going to do an extra step, which is a downsampling. The downsample is also a plugin, and what it does, it basically reduces the number of events uh, in your population to uh, a specific number that you want. 
So for example, I have here about 160,000 events. Um, obviously the computational time, it's depending on the number of events that you have and on the power um, of your computer. Uh, so if you have a powerful computer, uh, it's uh, much appreciated. Um, or if you don't have a powerful computer, downsampling may be one of the options to um, start your analysis in a faster way. I do have a powerful, uh, pretty powerful computer, but still time is, um, is not enough in this training to do everything I wish I, I could do. Okay, so I'm going to start downsampling my CD3 populations. So I can click on plugins, click a downsample, and tell the software what is the final number of events that I want in my CD3 population. I can just type in like 20,000. And this is super fast. So I have right now uh, a downsampled population of 20,000 events of CD3 cells. And the way how the downsample uh, plugin works, it's depending on the initial number and the final number that you give to the, to the software. So uh, for example, here I had 160,000 events. If I wanted uh, 16,000, 16,000 events, it would take uh, one cell every 10. <coughs> Sorry. So I can apply the same operation to my next sample, just uh, dragging and dropping it to the population that I want. or I can copy it to the, uh, to the group without problems. I see there are several questions coming up. Um, let me know if you can keep up. Okay, so now that I have 20,000 20, events for my CD3 population in all of my um, samples coming from LD1, which is basically my donor number one, uh, for which I have four different conditions of stimulation. Uh, I have the first condition which has no stimulation at all, the second condition that is not stimulated plus PI, uh, the third condition PI plus not stimulation, and the fourth condition PI plus PI where basically um, the cells were stimulated for um, two hours and 20 minutes more. So once I have created my downsample population, I can uh, apply this. Uh, again, downsampling is not mandatory. You can choose to do it or not to do it. It's just up to you. And I can apply my TSNIP, for example, or before, if I want to look at conditions between, um, uh, if I want to look at several conditions within the same sample, I can do an extra step, which is the concatenation. So I can put together these 20,000 events coming from all the different CD3 subpopulation of the, of the samples, just by right-clicking, selecting equivalent nodes, and then under file, export concatenate, concatenate population. When you open up this window, you will have two options. One is export and two is concatenate. I want to put together all the four uh, different conditions. So I can select concatenate, select a destination folder. Always, please don't forget that. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new folder for this. Concatenate it and choose. I can also choose advanced options or not. I can give a name or not. So once I click on concatenate it, I can select and choose if I want to open it to a new workspace or into the existing workspace. I'm going to open it into the existing workspace and close. And you will see at the end of my workspace, I have my concatenated file right here. So on my concatenated file, I can then apply my TSNI and select the parameters that I want. When I open up a TSNI window, <clears throat> I can give a run to the uh, a name to the run. It's always uh, advised to give a different name if you're making multiple runs within a workspace so you are not 
confused. Then you can select the parameters that you want to uh, analyze by TSNI. And here we have uh, a learning, com learning configuration which is, uh, which is optimized uh, based on this paper right here. So for all the plugins, you will always find uh, either in the PDF or when you run the plugin, the uh, source. So where the plugin were develop was developed from, so there will always be a paper uh, link to it if you want to use it for your um, literature or if you just want to uh, learn uh, deeper what you are doing and you can just go uh, on the link and just read the paper and I can just click on run. This will automatically select everything, which means will automatically select iteration and perplexity and learning rate. Uh, iteration and perplexity are uh, two characteristics of the algorithm that will explain, well, that will tell the uh, algorithm how many times it has to run and uh, to uh, select for uh, differences between, uh, between cells and how many cells has to consider as a neighbor uh, for analyzing uh, uh, similarities and differences as well. So I can click on run. And the native Disney, it's pretty fast. So now I have 80,000 cells because I concatenated 20,000 cells from each of my condition. And here you see the progress of the calculation. I'm pretty sure most of you have used Disney already on Flojo, but it's interesting to run it before going through the next, um, to the next plugins. So as well as for Disney, we have uh, another plugin, which is called UMAP that, um, is a different algorithm, but performs the same uh, kind of analysis, which is dimension ID reduction. So all the plugins for dimension ID reduction uh, are intended to help you in visualization, because what they do, they reduce the number of dimensions into a two dimensional plot. So you will be able to look at all dimensions just in a, uh, in a plot as you do in flow cytometry. As we usually, we, can't make a number of combinations uh, from several parameters by eye or by hand. This uh, computationally could be extremely uh, hard for us as humans. So that's why we use algorithms and we ask for help to the algorithms. So once you have your teasing, that's what you see. You can choose a third parameter as a heat map and you can select the parameter that you want to look within uh, your TSNI. So for example, I can select perforin or I can select the different parameters as ERC or interferon gamma, for example. And you will also have an additional um, parameter whenever you concatenate, which is the sample ID that will help you to identify which is uh, the specific sample the population is coming from. So for example, if I open up my file, uh, I can look on my parameters that I have a new one, which is called sample ID right here. And these are the lymphocytes from all of my samples, uh, all of my the sample ID, and I can create gates on it. So this will be my condition one. Let's just give a name one. This will be my condition number two. Three. And four. So once I have created some gates, what I can do, I can go into my workspace.
and look at my Disney into the workspace. Mm -mm. So I'm going to look at my Disney 1 and Disney 2. And then see which condition is well. So basically here you have all the different conditions overlaid with my Disney. And one more thing I can do for my Disney map is just drag and drop my Disney into the layout. And then right click under multi, uh, make multigraph overlays, I can see multigraph color mapping where I can select the parameter that I want to see as a heat map. So I wanna see all of them. And here they are. So then you will have the same Disney map for all the parameters and you can see uh, the heat map for all the parameters that you have used, uh, that you used into the panel. So once I have looked at my sample from, let's say a visual perspective that can be by using Disney or by using UMAP, um, I can then look for act actual clusters in it. So, and I can move, uh, uh, move on and use my uh, automatic clustering algorithms, such as, for example, FlowSum or XShift. So I can close this one and I, I want to interrogate I want to interrogate my uh, one of my samples, for example, and I want to ask what are the clusters that are automatically identified by FlowSum or by another algorithm uh, for automatic clustering, such as XShift, for example. So I can FlowSum. It's pretty fast, so you can either use it in uh, onto the down sample population, or you can use it on the full uh, on the full sample. Doesn't really matter because it's extremely fast. So I can, for example, run it in uh, onto my CD3 as I still don't want into my final data uh, my dead cells or uh, my doublets. So I can click on plugins and click on FlowSum. Even here, when you run FlowSum, you will need to uh, select the parameters that you want to analyze. So I don't want my dead cells. Okay. Uh, one suggestion is uh, to select this uh, or to, a to enable uh, this box right here, which is save the R script and output messages. Because every time you start uh, running a plugin on your, um, on your workspace, so the first plugin you uh, run on your workspace, Flojo will save um, a folder into, uh, onto your desktop where in that folder, you will find all the outputs of the different plugins that you run. And in the same folder, you will also find eventually uh, the R script and what basically R was doing into the background. So if somehow it may happen that the plugin doesn't work for you and you email me or Christoph or the tech support, we may ask you to send us the R script which will be in that specific folder saved on, uh, onto your desktop with the name of the workspace. And in the R script, there will be basically all the action and operations that are performed. And if something is not working, usually the R script tell, tells us why or what is missing. So I can insert also, uh, so FlowSum is uh, one of the, plug, uh, of the plugins that allows you to insert the number of clusters that you want it, the, um, the plugin to find. Uh, some other <clears throat> plugins as XShift, for example, will not ask you to insert the number of clusters, uh, while FlowSum requires you to insert a specific number of clusters that you want, to, uh, that you want him to find. 
So I will just leave the default uh, options here. I can click on OK. And should come, yeah, right away. So I set, I left uh, eight clusters for Flosun. So right now there are my eight clusters, my eight populations. So you see from zero to seven. And to visualize what Flosun did, I can just open up my layout and drag, drag and drop the node of Flosun into my layout. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So what Flowsum did, basically generated a spanning tree where you have a legend right here for the background color, which means, uh, which indicates the specific cluster. So each cluster has a background color uh, that it's, it's indicated with the number into the workspace. And the spanning tree is generated by uh, using circles. So each circle is directly proportional to the number of cells included in it. And if you wanna see what are expressing the cells included in this circle, you will have a pie chart right here that specify what is the marker more expressed in that specific circle or in that specific pie chart. For example, we can look here, we have green and red. So these are um, CD8 cells that express perforin, for example. And if, you, if I want to see what is the specific cluster for that as a blue background, uh, like a light blue background, so it's my cluster number four, for example. I hope this is pretty clear. Okay. Uh, okay, so if you want to perform an extra step, actually, you can use the flow sum map and embed it by using embed sum. So embed sum will use and will need to use a flow sum map. So we'll, you will always need to have a flow sum map first to use embed sum and to have a, a, a visualization of, uh, of the spanning tree in a different way in a bidimensional plot. So what I can do, I can go under, under my same population, click on plugins and click on embed sum and I will need to select the flow sum map file. So my flow sum map will be on my desktop, will be on the folder of today and will be right here. It's basically the only uh, clickable file that you find into the Flowsome folder. And you will see that it's calculating. Okay, so if I want to visualize that, I can just drag and drop my population and then on my parameters, I can check for embed some one and embed some two. And that's my embed some map that has been created by using my flow sum map. What also gives you flow sum, it's something extremely interesting. So if I look for my folder on my desktop, which is, what? yeah, it's here has the same name as my workspace, if you see. I can click on Flowsum and I have several files right here. So these are uh, all PDF or PNG files where you have several information. So you have the Excel file of the FMIs for all the parameters and all the clusters, but you also have something uh, such as the PNGs. Uh, this is like with no background and this is the actual one. Um, but you also find two uh, heat maps that show you basically all the clusters and the expression of all the markers for each cluster. 
So the heat map is an extra step uh, or an extra information that Flowsong gives you that other plugins do not, uh, do not give you right away as an output. And then you have all the MFIs and uh, all sorts of data that you can look for into the Flowsum folder. So if you see for my uh, sub for my initial folder, I have all the, uh, the subfolders that I used for my plugins and all the informations for each plugin. Uh, if I want, instead of using Flowsum, I want to use XShift, which is um, another different plugin that uh, identifies automated clustering without you telling how many clusters you want it to find. I can do exactly the same thing. So I can uh, click on my population, select plugins and run X shift, which is right here. Even in this case, you have the citation. You will need to select the parameter that you want to analyze. And you click on OK. And it will look for all the different clusters that are present into your specific sample. Let's see. Let's see questions and answers if there is any. How do I know which of the dimensionality reduction tools works best for my samples? And what is the difference between them? Just a different algorithm. Well, there is not a, best, a single best algorithm to use. There is not a gold standard. It, also, it always depends on uh, what is your sample, what are you looking for. Specifically, these kind of plugins and algorithms are used for discovery. Everything that you find by looking at uh, your samples by using uh, plugins, it needs to be absolutely validated. Uh, so don't take anything for granted. Everything needs to be then scientifically validated. I mean, if you find a new population, uh, that population may be true or not. So um, to just be sure that um, the population uh, it's real, you need to validate it scientifically, absolutely. Uh, and the algorithms and the kind of calculation is of course different, yes. Can you also use the clustering plugins if you use, for example, 48 colors or 48 colors panel? If you use 48 colors panel, I think you are one of the first people in the world, but um, yes, you can al always use uh, plugins for the different um, panels that you have. It doesn't really matter the number of um, the number of colors or parameters. So if you see XGIFT right now found 10 different clusters, each cluster has a statistics right here. So what you can do if you see this one has 0 0.48 uh, to 766 cells. Of course, you will need to validate that and look for um, the reality of it. But what you can do, what the advice can be, and this is true for XShift and also for Phenograph, which is another um, uh, automatic clustering algorithm that doesn't require you to insert the number of clusters. You can use one of the tools, so Phenograph or XShift to check uh, or to allow the algorithm to calculate the number of clusters for you and then insert that specific number of clusters into Flowsum and visualize it with a spanning tree. Because what is the option? Why should I choose Flowsum over XShift? There are pros and cons to do both of them. Uh, for Flowsum, the pro is that uh, you have an output, you have visual output so, uh, that is the spanning tree and uh, the heat map. While for XGIF, you don't have any output except for this, um, for this specific number of clusters right here. Um, so the idea would be 
use XGIF to get an ideal number of clusters and then you can insert that number of clusters into FlowSum so you can have both things. And eventually if you, if you want to visualize um, everything together, we have another plugin which is called uh, Cluster Explorer that allows you to put together dimensionality reduction plugins with uh, automated clustering plugins. So what I can do now, let's see if I do something uh, like this. I'm gonna run flow some where I ran Tisney already. And then you can always overlay the clusters found by Flowsum or, um, or Phenograph with, um, or XShift with a dimensionality reduction tool. So in this case, where I have my Tisney, so I can do Tisney one and Tisney two. And then I can take the population that Flowsome identified for me and drag and drop them directly into my, or onto my map in, uh, in Tisney, for example. So I can see where the clusters are exactly on my map. Or if I'm too bored of doing that, I can just run as a plugin Cluster Explorer that will ask you what is the um, automated clustering plugin that you used? So the derived cluster column. In this case, I ran Flowsum, so I will select Flowsum. Uh, ask you asks you the um, parameter that you want to use to create the the peaks and the um, derived map uh, for x and y parameters, which in this case my dimensionality reduction tool was Tisney. So I can click on OK. And that's what you have right here. So basically now we have everything, just a second. Okay. Okay, so on top, uh, on top right, there are all the clusters identified from my uh, automatic clustering tool. On bottom right, there is the Tisney map and the overlay of my clusters with the Tisney map. And then I have a heat map for all of, all of the clusters identified by Flowsum and the expression of the markers uh, uh, that I used in my panel. And then I have the uh, relative expression level for all of the markers in each cluster. So what I can do here, I can even select single or uh, multiple clusters and compare them, for example. Like in this case, I can have a visualization of where they are located into my Tisney map, what is the, uh, the expression of the markers and how is the heat map for them. So I can say the biggest cluster is cluster number zero, right? So it's this one. If I'm interested in a specific cluster, Let's say I'm interested in the cluster number five, for example, that has the higher expression of interferon gamma. How do I select that cluster? How do I identify it and gate that specific cluster? Uh, so Flojo has a plugin also for that. So I can uh, click on my, on my sample, go on my plugin and use HyperFinder to select a specific cluster. So HyperFinder will find the shortest way to get to that cluster for me. Uh, and uh, analyzing all the different combinations of markers that allow me to create a gating strategy and a specific gate to, uh, to get to that um, cluster specifically. So I can also tell him the number, the maximum number of gates that I want. I can change these or not. Uh, the F measure is the precision on how uh, the, the cluster, are the, the gates are designed by the software. And then I can select the parameters that I want to use to create that gating strategy or that specific gate. Once I've done that, uh, HyperFinder will ask me what is, which one is the cluster that you are interested in. So for example, we say that the cluster we were interested in was the cluster number five. I can click on okay. 
and it will start calculating all the different combinations of markers to get me to that specific population of interest. It's pretty fast over here. So I can easily go to that specific cluster by getting on uh, interferon gamma versus CD4 and CD38 versus interferon gamma. So this can be uh, useful, for example, in your sorting uh, gating strategies. When you find something and you only have uh, a specific or limited number of gates to sort your specific population, then you can select the specific population you are interested in, run hyperfinder, and a hyperfinder will uh, choose the shortest way to get to that, uh, to that population, and then you can sort it out. Um, we also have some other different um, plugins that we have been uh, developed. Let's see. Um, so, I will show you a different plugin that uh, it's the Violin Box plugin, where you can select the parameter to be plot. So, basically, we'll show you how is the expression of the parameters uh, within your sample. So, and it's a different uh, visualization way that you have. I'm going to choose all the parameter and then you have also as an optional a categorical parameter for cluster identification you can choose the kind of uh, uh, graph it's uh, it's a way uh, to create graphs within flojo uh, so you can choose any kind of graph that you want mm -hmm. And then it can be interactive as well. So you can change it. Uh, I now selected just the, the plot. Let's see, there are other questions and answers? No. Okay. Okay. Seems like it's taking time. So whenever you will, uh, um, we will release a new plugin, you will find it into the Flojo Exchange webpage. Um, and I always invite you guys to check to the latest version because sometimes a day you can wake up and your plugin cannot work for some reason. And that's because probably there was an update of R or an update of, uh, of the plugin itself. Uh, this is taking some time, so I don't know why. Um, let's, um, okay, so one latest plugin that I wanted to show you is the Sunburst. So I can create, let's see, yeah. Uh, it's again a graph um, plugin, so I, it will create a graph for you. I can launch it. There will be a web page that opens up for you. There it is. Okay. So here you will have the number of cells for all the gating strategy that you have created, which is kind of interesting. And you can also look at uh, the different gating strategy and creates, uh, it's a shiny hub, so it creates this, uh, this sunburst. And you can also select different colors or you can select the text orientation or uh, for example, let's see this one. And you can recalculate, so it's interactive um, uh, live. Let's see if this one worked, no. Okay, so. If there are more questions, I'm super happy to take them. Or if you have 
more interest in knowing something else or in seeing something else. Um, remember that all the plugins are downloaded for free and a good strategy would be using dimensionality reduction tools first to have an idea of what your sample look like, looks like, then apply uh, automated clustering tools uh, to your sample and identify the clusters. Once you have done that, if you want to compare to popula through, um, different populations, you can absolutely do that because, <coughs> yes, of course. Uh, the purpose of Sunburst, it's a shiny hub. So it's basically to create a graph for you because usually these kind of, um, um, of software, um, or at least Flojo was not creating graphs before or shiny apps before. Uh, I can absolutely show you how to concatenate again. Um, just one thing I wanted to mention is that when you use, no, it is not mandatory. It is mandatory to concatenate samples for doing Disney. No, it is not mandatory. Uh, you concatenate when you want to look at uh, differences between conditions, for example, within the same samples by staying on the same Disney map. So Disney, as well as for uh, you map are uh, stochastics. It means that if I run a second Disney on the same data set, uh, the map will not be the same, so I cannot reproduce the same map uh, just because it's uh, indeed because it's stochastic. So if you want to compare several conditions from, a same, from the same sample, concatenating is a good way of keeping your Disney map uh, and then perform the comparisons between them. Um, also, one more thing, whenever you get these populations from, from the automatic clustering tools, you can export these populations and then compare them. Um, so you can just right click and uh, click on um, export concatenate populations, which basically is a shortcut from what I showed you before. And these populations will be then filled to 100% and then you can create tables and add statistics to them. Uh, yes, the webinar are available. Um, the webinars are available on the Flojo Exchange under recorded webinars and uh, you find the title of the webinar and the, um, the date. So I'm going to just show you how to concatenate again. Uh, to concatenate, you will need to select different, at least more than one population, right, uh, or subpopulation to uh, put together. So for example, I can, uh, let's go on CD3. I can uh, concatenate these two, uh, yes, these two CD3 populations coming from my sample LD2, for example. So I can go under file, export concatenate, export concatenate population, concatenate. And then you will need to select a destination folder. You will need to select what do you want to concatenate, for example, all uncompensated parameters. You can choose also a keyword to concatenate or you can concatenate and files together. So let's say I wanna concatenate only every three files together that I have on my workspace. Or I want to concatenate all the files that include in their uh, keywords uh, the, the word um, control or uh, compensation or whatever. So you can just um, use this box right here where you want to concatenate for a specific keyword, which I don't, I didn't add right now. So I don't have uh, any that I can use in a good way right now. And then click on concatenate and then it will open up on your desktop. Yeah. So the name, it's telling me that there is a, already a file that exists in the, uh, in the output directory. And that's why I didn't change the name of the file that I'm concatenating. So if you get this error, that's the reason. But I know that these are two different concatenated files. So the second one should have had a different name. So 
I'm gonna close and not do anything, concat to, and save it in my existing workspace. And then you will find it at the end of your workspace, right here, concat to. Chat, grazie Serena. Oh, di niente, Claudia. <laughs> Okay, guys, so more questions. Christophe did, as always, an amazing and extremely wonderful job by answering all of your questions. If you don't have any other question, uh, this is the last of our webinars at the EU time. For now, I hope you guys are having a good uh, time at home during lockdown and I invite you to use these plugins as much as you can. And if you have any problem, I'm just going to share again my contacts and Christophe contacts. Uh, by the way, we have a free Flojo license uh, that we released for COVID-19 situation that is available till May 31st. So everyone that downloaded it will be uh, will have it on um, an active till May 31st. If you want, you can still download it from here or request it. Um, here is my contact and Christoph contact and Again, guys, if you have any problem, please uh, just contact us, send us an email. Uh, we are super happy to help or to screen share given the situation. Um, I'm honestly can't wait to go back and visit you guys. Um, so if there are no more questions, I'm actually, can clustering be done if you, ha if you have different patients? Yes, you can concatenate different patients. It depends, you know, whenever you apply this kind of algorithms, it depends on, from, on the output that you are looking for. If you want to um, analyze different, different patients, you can apply uh, automatic clustering tools, but of course you are comparing different patients. So some clusters can come from some patients and some clusters from others. So if you have at least different time points, you can concatenate different time points and then compare them. So it's, you know, it's always uh, regarding, it, it always depends on your final output and what you are looking for. You may, or you should have an idea of what you are looking for whenever you start an analysis, right? At least of an idea of how your sample is made or uh, about the treatment that you performed or what you expect from your sample. So it's the same thing as for the uh, quality, uh, for the quality check uh, plugins. So there is not a best algorithms. It always depends on what is your need? What is your sample? You know your sample, you know how you performed your experiment and you know better than us what you expect from it. So mm, just uh, try it out guys, uh, have fun with this because uh, I, I'm really super nice. Okay, so I, I see a question here. I'm having problems with Cytorum for Cytoflex files. So this afternoon, there is a webinar on Cytonorm and I invite you to join that webinar because you can uh, ask directly Ian, who is the expert on Cytonorm, uh, what is your problem and have him uh, talking to you and um, help you. For plugin helping sorting, do you suggest to use Flojo directly on sorting machine to work more quickly or other workstation? Okay, this is an interesting question. Uh, for plugin helping sorting, I guess you mean Hyperfinder. Um, I haven't showed you one thing, guys, which is the import export with Diva. So, um, we have this integrated solution right now for Flojo where you can create your workspace in Flojo and then export it to Diva and vice versa. Or you can perform your analysis, uh, let's say you can uh, create your gating strategy while you are processing your sample on your instrument 
uh, and then export it to Flojo without performing any uh, gating strategy. To do that, you can uh, just right click and then export or import from Paxdiva. So, of course, if you uh, are importing from Paxdiva, you will need to have the samples, the FCS files into your workspace, and then you can import the experiment from Diva and the gating strategy will be directly into the workspace, or you can export uh, to Faxdiva this way. Um, this import export works only with Faxdiva, between Faxdiva and Flojo. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you really so much to, for joining this webinar. I hope you, uh, you learned something, you liked it, and uh, if you have any other question, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you, Christophe, for being by my side all the time and answering these, uh, these questions. And I'll see you guys probably next time. Okay, can stop share. And there is one more question. Okay, we will reply these questions um, by typing. Mm-hmm.